Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Welcome to episode 11 in our quick progression series. We're going to need a lot of funds to unlock some more of our building upgrades, so we'll just jump into our mission control and we'll see what we've got available in here. We'll just pick up this position satellite mission here, and that's going to give us 115,000. So we'll just jump into our research and development centre. Because we're going to be doing a lot of small missions today, we'll be jumping in and out of here a little bit just to unlock a few small parts that we need for some of our various missions. We're just going to unlock our precision engineering tier, and specifically for this mission, we need the probodobodine hex unit. <laughs> That's a hard word to say. I might just call it the hex unit. So we also want to unlock heavy rocketry, and we're going to unlock this kickback booster. And down the track, the skipper engine and the poodle engine are great engines to have as well. Into our vehicle assembly building now. And we're going to start off by creating a brand new vessel. We want this to be a very cheap vessel, a vessel that we can easily boost a satellite into orbit. And we want it to get to a number of different bodies such as the Moon and Minmus. So we'll start off with this new Probodobodyne hex unit here. And we're just going to attach very light science instruments. So the first one we'll pop on here is our barometer so that we can measure our pressure data. Again, the idea is to keep this little satellite as light as we can, so we're going to uh, we're just going to put on one of each of these experiment uh, units. So on goes our temperature gauge. And keep in mind the idea of these science units is to be able to just quickly transmit science back to Kerbin. Even if there's no science to collect, we can still complete those missions that require us to transmit science. I'll we'll just grab a couple of, uh, of, of solar panels here. We'll attach two of these on each side of our little satellite. I prefer the 1x6s rather than the 2x3s just because they've got a bit of a better reach. Uh, and we don't actually want two of those temperature gauge units, so I'm just taking this one off. I didn't mean to put that on there. And of course we need a battery. Nothing big needed, just one here will do. And of course we need a way to transmit our science back, so we need our uh, Communitron antenna. So we'll just grab a small fuel tank. Now this is probably a bit overkill for this mission, but it's going to allow us with the same vessel to boost up to higher orbits. And we'll just grab a Terrier engine to pop on here as well, of course. Just pop on a decoupler there, and then we'll grab the next stage. Now, because this is such a light craft, we can get away quite well with just our new kickback solid rocket booster. And it keeps it quite cheap as well. We'll just raise this up here a bit. And we're definitely going to need some, uh, some winglets on this one. Just some small subtle ones will do. Keep in mind these solid rocket boosters don't have any gimbal at all. You need the winglets just to uh, allow you to control yourself in the atmosphere. So we'll just give this a name. Mission 11, Sat 1. And we're going to be stuck out on the pad for a little while while we wait for our correct launch time. So we're going to need a way to keep our battery charged on the launch pad. So we're going to pop on our launch stability enhancers here for the first time. And that's just going to allow us to keep ourselves charged and ready to launch on demand. Now the kickback solid rocket booster is very powerful for a vessel of this size, so we actually need to limit the thrust. This is just so it doesn't burn up exiting the atmosphere. So that's about it. We'll, uh, we'll launch. So what we want to do is we want to open up map view, and we just want to check out the position that this satellite needs to go. This blue line here gives us a lot of information. It tells us which direction we need to launch our satellite, it tells us the inclination it needs to be, and as well the apoapsis and the periapsis that we need to achieve for this satellite. Now in this case the inclination is the uh, critical part, we actually want to launch at the right time and the right direction to achieve this inclination straight away. So what we want to do is time warp until our launch site is directly under one of these orbit lines. We also need to make sure that we launch in the same direction as the orbit line, so it's roughly negative 25 degrees. So launching now, and what we want to do, instead of rolling our craft to 90 degrees, what we want to do is we want to roll it sort of more in between the 45 degree mark and the 90 degree mark. And, uh, and, <laughs> and I'm not doing it particularly well, I actually need to bring it back just so that I don't overshoot this. The thrust to weight ratio we've got at the start of this launch is actually a little low, but uh, it gets very, very quick, very fast. So once you've uh, got yourself on the right path, um, you just want to open up your map view, and you want to keep an eye on your inclination. 
So we can point our craft up a little bit or down a little bit on our nav ball just to adjust the inclination. We want to try to get our inclination as close as possible. So as we're gaining momentum you can see that this is dropping. So we're getting quite close here to our trajectory that we need. And okay, it stopped about there. So you can just get as close as you can here. And of course I've overshot this so we need to start bringing this back a little just to try to get your ascending node as close as possible. The closer you can get this, the less delta-v you'll need. Now, we've got plenty of delta-v in this particular satellite anyway, but I didn't have quite the correct trajectory there, so I'm just pulling this back up towards the 90 degree mark just to try to recover this. The winglets weren't uh, giving me quite enough control, so I've actually pushed too far. Once I ditch this stage that'll be fine. So we're sitting at about 5 degrees now, that's not too bad. We'll make some more corrections to uh, to that as we get higher and we uh, we decouple and activate our Terrier engine. So our apoapsis now is sitting at around 170. We've got a long way to go to get right out to our orbit. So we'll decouple our solid rocket booster. We'll go ahead and extend out our solar panels. Now more recently mission contracts have gotten smarter. It's quite likely that we'll end up having a mission to actually manoeuvre this satellite elsewhere after we achieve this orbit. And we'll warp around just before we hit our apoapsis marker so that we can begin our next burn to circularise. Three, two, one, fire. What we want to do now is keep improving on our inclination. So we're just going to head a little more towards the 90 degree mark again just until we get this right down. So just slight adjustments in your direction of burn. So we're at 3 degrees, 2 degrees, 1 degree, 2 degrees. Okay, we're not going to get it much better than that uh, 1 degree mark. So we're just going to point slightly in the opposite direction just to bring this back down to that 1 degree. Okay. Got that about right. We're not going to get much better than 1 to 2 degrees here. There we go. So once you've got your inclination as close as it's going to get, you just need to keep uh, burning in your prograde direction until you've circularised your orbit. And in fact there's actually no reason to stop here. We can keep burning until we, uh, we push our apoapsis marker right up to the orbit lines indicated by our satellite mission. Now if we were to have launched without getting that inclination quite right to start with, it would have cost us a lot more delta V to then adjust our inclination at a later time. Time accelerating here until we get around to our apoapsis marker and then we're going to circularize to try to get it pretty much spot on with our mission. Just circularizing here. Now you don't have to get it absolutely spot on, you, you just need to get it very very close and in fact our one degree inclination difference might not be a problem, it might actually let us accept that anyway. So we're just boosting, boosting up here until we meet our blue line, there we go. And then you just need to sit for 10 seconds and see, we might still need to do an inclination change just to get ourselves lined up. Our descending node there's still one, so, oh no, there we go. There we go, no, we actually did get it. So there's our first satellite. Of course, in real life, the very first satellite, Sputnik, was sent up by the Soviet Union in 1957 on October 4th. And it too was a very small device, only 58 centimetres, just over half a metre. It was a polished metal sphere, and it had four antenna which just sent regular radio pulses back. And this was so that the Soviets knew that it was up there and orbiting the Earth as they had planned. So we've picked up a few science experiments, we've completed our mission, and we'll just head on back to the Space Centre now to pick up another mission. And once we're back, we'll just jump into Mission Control to see what else is available. And we've got one mission here to grab some science from mm -hmm. space around mm -hmm. Minmus. And another one here which is to grab some science from the surface of Minmus, so that there too we can do straight away. These are going to be quite easy actually because we've got our mobile science lab vessel from mission 9 and 10 up there already so we can just use that to grab whatever we need. 
So switching to that vessel, now while we've been off sending our, uh, our first satellite, we've been accumulating a bit of science in our science lab up here already. So all we need to do is just transmit the science that we've got in our lab back. So we'll just right click and say transfer science here, we've got 40 science to send. So we'll transmit that and uh, yeah, now our Kerbals up here, the three Kerbals. Uh, Kimlin, Lanina and Kerfal, they're looking quite happy considering they've been stuck up here for quite some time but they're gonna be up here for quite a darn lot longer yet it's a good thing they don't eat anything otherwise we'd be in real trouble if we actually had to feed these guys so you can see there we've got the science data from the surface of Minmus so that was a pretty easy 56,000 in funds to accumulate just by doing that now our next mission, which is just to grab some science from the space around Minimus, is actually very easy. We've just got to lift ourselves slightly off the ground. So now we're off the ground, we'll grab this experiment, transmit it back, and we're done. That's all there is to it. We've just got to gently come back down, slowly touch back down again safely, and that's mission complete as well. So this one vessel can grab both sets of science from space around Minimus and from the surface of Minimus very easily just by doing that one little trick. So again, that's pretty easy money, and you can do this from anywhere that you get such a mission. So there's another 44,000 and a few science points there. And uh, we'll head back to the Space Center. Now when we get back here, we're just going to jump into our Research and Development Center. And we're just going to unlock these. We missed them before somehow. That's fine. And I'm looking for something here. I'm actually wanting to unlock the Advanced Grabbing Unit. And this is because I want to be able to clean up our junk problem as we uh, as we do some of our next missions. And so let's see what we've got in our mission control here. There's, uh, uh, there's, there's just loads of rescue missions. It's full of rescue missions. So we'll just pick up these two rescue missions from around Minmus. Should be pretty easy. And we also have a mission here which is just to grab some science data from Space Marine Kerbin. So we can do that easily as well. We'll grab that. Can't see anything there that we want to pick up as well, so we'll leave it with uh, with those three. And we'll pop back into our vehicle assembly building. And I've just loaded a craft, which is a modification on one of our previously used ones. This is a vessel from episode 8, which was our Mun landing. So we've removed the goo units from in the center of the uh, storage bay here, and we've just added a hex core unit. This is just going to mean we can uh, easily fly this vessel without even needing a pilot. And we've also just attached four new solar panels around the base of this thing. Now the one big modification to this craft is the advanced grabbing unit which I've popped right on the top here. And now that we've unlocked that new probe core, what we can do is we can utilize our scientist in our MK1 command pod to actually retrieve science from the science junior unit. So we've moved that down underneath the decoupler this time. We've also removed the landing legs. This thing isn't going to come down to land. We've added a second set of lights as well to point the opposite direction. So we'll just set up our solar panels to deploy when we hit our abort option like we have in previous episodes. And you'll see here we've dropped in a scientist in our command pod instead of our regular pilot. So the goal of this mission is to rescue our two Kerbinauts stranded around Minmus. And we're going to try to do it without leaving any junk behind because we've got our grabbing unit. So we'll just launch... And because we're already almost 14 minutes into this episode, we're going to time accelerate this whole mission. Off we launch, and of course we've seen this particular rocket launch up a number of times now. Just decoupling stage one. Dropping stage two. And dropping stage three. So off to Minmus we go. Things are starting to feel a little more routine now. Almost as routine maybe as what SpaceX are starting to feel launching up to the International Space Station every few weeks. And of course conducting absolutely amazing first stage landings such as uh, the one that was done back on the 5th of May. So we're just doing our usual setting target of Minmus and we're going to get our transfer window organized. Up we burn here until we get into a very high orbit around Kerbin. And we're just matching up our inclination at the ascending node this time, just at the point of lowest velocity, which is always the most efficient place to do it if you can. And because we've just got a tiny little sliver of fuel left in our uh, in our last core stage here, 
we're going to actually do a slight retrograde burn just to allow us to drop that back into Kerbin's atmosphere. And of course this is going to leave us without this piece of junk floating around Kerbin. I hate junk. So we'll continue this, uh, this mission with our Terrier engine out here. And uh, we'll just boost up away from this core stage, which is now doomed to uh, burn up in uh, Kerbin's atmosphere, obviously. So we'll uh, set up our encounter maneuvers here. There we go. So we'll just focus in on Minmus. And I've already determined that uh, we're not coming in from the correct direction. We need to uh, change our direction so that we're coming in in the opposite way. And we'll just time warp in. We've already demonstrated uh, rescues in a previous episode, so we're not going to go into too much detail here. We're just going to start lining up our inclinations to match our rescue vessels. So we'll drop ourselves down so that we can uh, meet up on our orbits correctly. And we're going to do our first encounter, Valfi's Heap. So we've switched over to Valfi and we're going to EVA her into our vessel. And we'll just grab and board. Now comes the tricky part. We're going to see if we can grab hold of Valfi's Heap. We've already armed our grabbing unit. And we're just going to slowly come here to see if we can grab hold of it. So the idea is we're going to redirect this thing, we're going to try to send it into Minmus for a crash landing rather than orbiting around Minmus. So just coming in just under one meter per second, you actually have to hit it a little hard with the grabbing unit to make the grabbing unit get hold, otherwise it'll just bounce off. In fact I've already had a few goes at this already and each time it'd bounce off I had to actually increase the velocity. You can't just come in and gently grab hold of it, you sort of have to come in just with a bit of force it seems. So we'll just see how we go, coming in closer, 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 and yes, got it. I actually originally thought that it would be very easy to grab hold of these things, but uh, it takes a little bit of uh, messing around. It could just be because they're so light and they bounce off so easy. So we're just doing a slight retrograde burn here just so that this vessel is going to hit the other side of Minmus and crash and burn. So we'll let that go. So we'll turn around and we'll boost ourselves back up so that we don't hit the planet. So we're just going to grab Ludlock's Hulk and set him as the target. And we'll just do some organising to make sure that we've got a good encounter set up so that we can rescue Ludlock. Interestingly, in the Apollo program, the original moon missions, NASA actually designed the Gemini uh, lunar surface rescue spacecraft just for situations where the astronauts become stranded for some reason. So it was proposed more as a lifeboat so that a rescue attempt could be made later. As far as I know though, it was only a proposal and it was never actually built. A lot of the reason for that would certainly have been due to cost. So we're just coming in here, we're going to wipe off our relative speed. Just a small retrograde burn. Just trying to get as close as we can. We'll be right with you, Ludlock. We're getting pretty good at these rendezvous now. Just slowly wiping off all the remaining relative velocity. Just so that we're nice and stationary together. Only a small number of meters away now, so we'll just switch over to Ludlock and we'll start his EVA in here towards our rescue vessel. Just slowly coming in and we'll grab and board. So we'll just do the same thing with Ludlock's Hulk here and we'll just see if we can grab this. And yes! First go that time. So again we'll turn retrograde. And again we'll just do a slight retrograde burn so that the opposite side of our orbit just falls back into the Minmus body. So we'll be able to track this falling back into the atmosphere, not atmosphere, there is no atmosphere, into the uh, ground itself. So we're just going to detach this now. So just because we've got some more science to pick up here with our science junior unit, we're just going to grab this. And we're just going to do a bit of a quick trick here. Now what we can do is get the scientist out of our craft and just get him close to the science junior unit. And we can actually just right click 
and just hit the collect data option. So we'll remove the data and we can actually now bring this back to our command pod. Now because we've now grabbed that data we don't need to return with a material bay so we can ditch that that's why it's now under the decoupler. Obviously in the past we've had a bit of trouble returning with this because it's such a tricky unit to re-enter with it overheats very quickly. And of course it doesn't matter now because we've got all the science from the material bay in our command pod. Now the reason we didn't do this in earlier episodes is because we really just wanted a pilot so that we could control our craft easier. Now that we've got the probe core that really doesn't matter. So we'll just grab any other science that we haven't already collected here. Just a little bit of pressure data here remains. Grab the temperature, close that one off. And that's about it for this uh, this mission. We, we wasn't really aiming to pick up a lot of science, so that's fine. So we'll just watch Ludlock's Hulk falling back into Minmus. And boom. <laughs> At least we can still hear explosions in a vacuum, science be damned. So we're just setting up our Minmus escape burn so that we fall back into Kerbin's atmosphere. And we just overshot that a little, just need to turn around and bring this back up just a little. Whoop, and, and we overshot it again. Let's try this again, just a little bit more gently. You just want to get it to around that 35 kilometer mark. So with the magic of video editing, we're just coming into the atmosphere now. Just double checking, we've got all the science around here that we can get, and we'll just close it up and in we come. Now we've got a pretty high velocity entry going on here, so the heat is pretty high but not quite enough to blow anything up on this particular craft. We would have been screwed with the Science Junior unit on here. We're actually going to need to take two passes to uh, to fully re-enter here. We've got a lot of velocity to knock off. Around we come, and in for our second pass here now. Remember when entering, of course, you need to keep yourselves pointed as close to that retrograde marker as you can. This particular craft is made to be fairly bottom heavy, so it just naturally falls in. In fact, I've taken SAS off altogether here. And just dropping the chutes. Jettison the heat shield. And down we come for a nice water landing with our two new Kerbinauts splashed down there. Let's recover the vessel. So I've got our science here, another 148 science earned and returned. But more importantly, we've uh, rescued a few more uh, Kerbals for our space facility. So we've got an extra pilot and an extra scientist which will come in very handy. So just skimming through the different missions we've completed here, obviously we've picked up our Kerbinauts. And we've completed a lot of new milestones. We've done a Minmus rendezvous, we've performed a crew transfer, we've started constructing our first station, we've performed a docking manoeuvre, and of course we've escaped and returned home from Minmus for the first time. So we did forget to do one thing though, we forgot to actually pick up the science data from around Kerbin, because I'm stupid. So we can actually quickly go and do that right now. Luckily for us, earlier in this same episode, we actually put a satellite up into orbit around Kerbin, so we can just switch over to that. Now this particular tactic is really good for anybody in the whole Kerbal system. You can transfer away, grab some science around anybody, and pick up easy money this way. So we'll just quickly grab a temperature scan, and we'll just transmit no science back, which will still complete our mission. So the more satellites you've got around the place, the more you can do this whenever you see one of those missions. In this case, because we're only around Kerbin, it's just a $16,000 reward, but it would be a much bigger reward for more distant bodies. So we've just switched back over to our tracking station. And we're just going to head back out to Minmus. Seeing as the last mission's taken us quite a reasonable amount of time, we should now have generated on Minmus a very large amount of science to transfer back. So just right clicking on our Science Junior unit, you're going to see that we've now filled it right up. We're just going to transmit this back to Kerbin and away we go. 500 science almost. So as we're sending back, we'll just do a little time warp so that it can accumulate its energy enough to send this. There we go. And of course there's plenty more science to generate and process and send back to Kerbin after this. 
So we'll end the episode there. We actually did a number of missions there in that one run, so that was good. We've got over a thousand science points here to use, and we've got a good chunk of cash as well. Again, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions at all, please do whack them in the comments. Thanks very much to you all, though, that have subscribed. For those who haven't, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Now as the science is processed, you can see the data is slowly ticking down as well. Not as fast as the science is going up, but the data is ticking down as well. Once your data is down around halfway, keep filling it up with more experiments because the more data they've got, the faster they'll actually process science. Now after you've completed all the science you possibly can in this biome, jump to another biome.